Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we're going to be discussing J.D. Greer, Neil Shenvey, and Megan Basham's latest book, Shepherds for Hire, in which she goes after J.D. Greer quite a bit, and deservedly so. J.D. Greer is a very woke preacher, very far-left preacher, and he was a detriment to the Southern Baptist Convention. We're going to recap a lot of this in today's Video, we're going to talk about Neil Shenvey trying to stick up for his homeboy, uh, you know, J.D. Greer, his pastor. And Neil Shenvey has no credibility because he goes to a woke church, and yet he is the Big Eva chosen critic of wokeness. So, Neil Shenvey's not a good guy. I do call Neil Shenvey out in my upcoming book, Winning Not Winsome, which is coming out next month, September. So, Big update on that, but we'll get to that later. But first, I want to let you know, Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support our work over at evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join. This is our Patreon-like system. Uh, it gives you bonus access to bonus content. We also have a free Evangelical Dark Web newsletter uh, linked in the description below. Uh, gives you Christian news in your inbox each and every day, but the least you can do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, to the podcast if you are new. So, with that said, let's uh, dive into this story. Neil Shenby put out a thread after, you know, his reading of uh, of Megan Bashman's book, and he points out some of the footnotes, and he takes issue with some of these footnotes. So, Megan Bashman put out the book Shepherds for Sale. I am reading it so far. I really like the book. I We'll have a lot more to say about it later on when I give my official review. I'm not fully completed the reading yet, but I've read a lot of it thus far, and I have read all the parts that we're going to discuss in this uh, thread by Neil Shenby. He just, I just finished the introduction of Megan Basham's Shepherds for Sale. My review will focus more on broader themes than on factual issues, but I spot check some of the endnotes for material I recognized. And he's going to post these without commentary, and then he's going to say that these are basically misrepresentations is the implication, but I don't see these as misrepresentations. So, Megan Basham writes, Knowing that they do not have the backing of their claimed constituencies, evangelical leaders turn their pulpits into platforms and pulpits and platforms into vehicles for shaming the rank and file because they will not agree that supporting say black the black lives matter movement is a gospel issue necessary to show the world what it means to be faithful followers of christ so that's uh megan basham characterizing this clip from jd greer we know that many in our country particularly our brothers and sisters of color right now are hurting southern baptists we need to to say it clearly as a gospel issue black lives matter of course black lives matter. Our, our black brothers and sisters are made in the image of God. Black lives matter because Jesus died for them. Black lives are a beautiful part of God's creation, and they make up an essential and beautiful part of his body. And we would be poor as a people without um, them and, and other minorities in our midst. Let me echo my, my, my friend Jimmy Scroggins, um, pastor down in, in Florida, in saying that black lives matter is an important thing to say right now because we are seeing in our country the evidence of specific injustices that many of our black brothers and sisters and friends have been telling us about for years. And, and, and by the way, let's not respond by, by saying, oh, well, all lives matter. Of course all lives matter, but I've heard it described this way. Say you're in a group or with a group at a restaurant and, and the waiter brings the food to, to everybody except for one guy at your table, your friend Bob. And so you say to the waiter, hey, excuse me, Bob deserves food. And somebody at your table corrects you to say, no, 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 all of us deserve food. Well, that's true, but you're missing the point. Bob is sitting there by himself without food. And so we are saying we understand that that, that, uh, that, that many of our black brothers and sisters have perceived for many years um, that the processes, the due processes of justice have, have not worked for them as they have for some others in our country. And by the way, like Jimmy, uh, like Dr. Scroggins says, let's spare each other the quotation of stats right now. You know, if you talk to some black friends, you'll know that they can tell you about their experiences and how some of them can be quite different from, from others in our country. We want um, rights and privileges to be extended to everybody. Um, we Christians want to hear our 
our brothers and sisters, to feel their pain, to enter into that pain and bear that burden with them. Black Lives Matter. And by the way, I realize that the movement and, and the website has been hijacked by some political operatives whose worldview and policy prescriptions will be deeply at odds with my own. But that doesn't mean that the sentiment behind it is untrue. I do not align myself with the Black Lives Matters organization. So let's go back to the footnote because the Black Lives Movement Matters movement is a gospel issue. Now, J.D. Greer does distinguish himself from the organization and the website, but not the movement. He says that they have hijacked the movement, but he calls the movement a gospel issue. This is a 10 out of 10 correct representation of what J.D. Greer said. And by the way, let's just go back into what J.D. Greer said. It's actually really bad because a lot of postmodernism in there because he's trying to struggle session people. Talk to people. Don't quote FBI statistics on crime. Talk to people. Struggle session yourself. Get one side of a story and that'll, you know, teach you about racism. And that is anecdotal evidence is like the least, uh, you know, relevant evidence to discuss matters of justice and injustice in the United States. That is the least, you know, he's emphasizing personal experiences over empirical data. That's, that's the postmodernist uh, line of thinking, as opposed to the modernist line of thinking, which, you know, believe that, you know, science could solve everything. Uh, that's an overgeneralization, but still true. Uh, so Neil Shenvey is, uh, you know, trying to stick up for his homeboy, his pastor, and just come completely failed there because that was an accurate representation. So uh, Greer went on to liken those leaving uh, churches over woke teachings to a synagogue of Satan. We actually covered this back in the day on Evangelical Dark Web. We do have a uh, an article and a video about this. So this is true. Uh, he does do this. It's in the quote right there. You know, when the church gets in bed with politics, the church gets pregnant. The offspring does not look like our heavenly father. It looks like the synagogue of Satan. So what does he say before uh, the synagogue of Satan thing? He laments the fact that people are leaving his church for various reasons. So if you left J.D. Greer's church over his woke teaching, over um, you know his branch covidianism, you would be called someone who's you know, bringing politics into the church and thus a uh, synagogue of Satan. Uh, I think that's also a pretty accurate representation of what he said here. So we did a video on this already. It was pretty bad at the time, but, you know, J.D. Greer's a bad guy. Uh, but nonetheless, Neil Shenvey feels the need to stick up for him. But don't worry, Neil Shenvey's not in any way woke, Big Eva tells us. So this is where we get into Megan Basham quoting... Uh, or referencing uh, Kristen Dumez, who's the author of uh, Jesus and John Wayne, which is a book that got gushing reviews from liberal elites in Big Eva. But, you know, anyone who has any orthodoxy did not like this book. And even some people who pretend to have orthodoxy didn't even like this book. So the claim that uh, Megan Basham makes is every major news outlet from CBS to BBC fetid, uh, Jesus and John Wayne, a book that e claims even Billy Graham was motivated more by politics than faith, wedding patriarchal gender roles to a rising Christian nationalism. So, where is that quote? It's right here, apparently. Uh, Not all evangelicals in Graham's day embraced such patriarchal teachings. Some believed Christ's atonement had nullified any curse placed on Eve in the book of Genesis opening the way to egalitarian gender roles. In the late 19th century and early 20th century, evangelicals in this tradition, by the way, that's like a hyper-charismatic tradition. Uh, it's not a Protestant, it's not a true Protestant pr tradition. Had been enthusiastic proponents of women's rights. Graham's patriarchal interpretation reflected more than reactionary tendencies of the early 20th century fundamentalism. He added a new twist, however, by wedding patriarchal gender roles to a rising Christian nationalism. Again, what exactly did Megan Basham say here that wasn't directly in the book? Uh, so yeah, I don't know why Neil Shenvey thought that that was worth highlighting. That's a 
you know, accurate citation of Kristen Dumez and a representation of what she said. J.D. Greer, um, this is another J.D. Greer footnote. We should mourn when closet racists and neo-confederates feel more at home in our churches than do many of our people of color. He thundered from the platform of the SBC's National Convention in 2021. Of course, the megachurch pastor did not back up this shocking accusation with evidence or identify these rank and unrepentant sinners. So then we have the actual quote, which is critical race theory is an important discussion, and I'm all for robust theological discussion about it for something as important as what biblical justice looks like we need careful robust bibles open on our knees discussion but we should mourn when closet racists and neo-confederates feel more at home in our churches than do many of our people of color and to be sure for the vast majority of our churches this is not true that is not true and that this is not true of you and your church then praise god but I have received emails and phone calls from people in our Southern Baptist churches who do not fit that description. Again, Megan Basham said he didn't have receipts. J.D. Greer did not provide the receipts. That is another accurate footnote. Uh, and this last one's about the 11th commandment, which is, again, we're still in the introduction of the uh, Megan Basham's book. Greer, then president Southern Baptist Convention, have wielded the 11th commandment, which uh, is about not speaking out against other Southern Baptist leaders, typically those on the left, like a rocket launcher firing descriptors like divisive and demonic at any who raise objections to the promotion of critical race theory, feminism, or, you know, homosexual ideology in Southern Baptist uh, ministry, SBC ministries. So, this is the uh, footnote. It's from the SBC Executive Committee speech. Uh, do we need reform? Absolutely, Greer said. And it is doctrine important. Of course, these are not idle words. This is our life. It is eternal vigilance that place that the price of doc eternal is eternal vigilance. The price of doctrinal integrity. Of course, should we ever forget? The painful battles won on our behalf in the 1980s and 1990s? Oh, may it never be. The problem is many of our divisions are based on 90% misunderstandings, distortions, and often outright lies. And it has grieved me more than you can imagine. Again, that wasn't even true at the time. 90% of the mis not It's not based on 90% misunderstandings. Uh, you know, in the Southern Baptist Convention, it's pretty clear that a lot of people want female pastors. It's pretty clear that a lot of people uh, want to preach the anti-white ideologies. It's pretty clear that a lot of people want to teach side B theology. Uh, these aren't 90% misunderstandings. Uh, Greer continues, I'm not talking about communicating ambigu ambigu ambiguity on things the scriptures speak clearly on. The sanctity of life and marriage, the sinfulness of homosexuality, these Things that our faithful Christians cannot disagree on, and our consciences are captive to these captives in these to the Word of God. It is not about clarity. It's not that clarity about the dangers of critical race theory isn't important. It is. Southern Baptists convent. Southern Baptists are ready to walk into the future, but we're spending a lot of time dealing with people that are trying to rip us apart, brothers and sisters. Let's just call it call it what it is. The their their things are demonic so that's a it's weird to read jd greer speaking in rhetorical fashion uh, i'm not sure you know the scripture like divisive was super but the the, the demonic was actually was was very accurate uh the southern baptist convention is very compromised on all three of the aspects listed the critical race theory the feminism and the uh homosexuality and stuff um because Again, people like uh, Nate Collins was allowed to get a PhD at Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. There is some, you know, the, the Southern Baptist Convention did export a lot of people who were involved in uh, side B theology. And again, the feminism, the critical race theory, these are all major things that several Southern Baptists are involved in. So, uh, 
it's a legitimate criticism, Neil Shenvey says in the comments section, to say the movement was never hijacked. But I'm saying that the quote doesn't support the claim that he supported the Black Lives Matter movement. Yes, it did. I mean, Neil Shenvey is, you know, he, he's not an honest broker. And people like him are the baddies. Just being real. J.D. Greer is a false teacher. Let's just be real about J.D. Greer. I got one more clip about J.D. Greer. Uh, and it's about him. It, it, it's just a picture of his church. I know that we have women in this church who have had abortions. I know that some are currently experiencing an unplanned pregnancy. And I know that you are hurting and you are confused. And maybe you felt like in the situation, you didn't have any other options. And there were all these pressures that were on you and you didn't know what to choose. And I don't want to make this any harder than it is. I genuinely don't. We are here for you to walk with you in that. I know that we even in our church have people who work, the people that attend our church that work in some of these clinics. And I know that you entered that profession, not with any ill will, but you did it because you wanted to serve. And so I understand why you're conflicted when, when I get into something like this. So J.D. Greer thinks that you can work at an abortion clinic with good intentions. No, you can't. You are a mercenary for hire, a hitman for hire. You don't have good intentions. You have sordid intentions. And the fact that, you know, he doesn't want to make those people feel uncomfortable. No, I think if you, you've had these, if you've participated in this, you should feel uncomfortable in church. You should be driven to repentance in church. J J.D. Greer, you know, is all about being gospel-centered until you actually have to confront specifically women with their sins. So... That's the type of pastor J.D. Greer is. He is a bad guy. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that for now. My name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, do you also subscribe if you are new. Have a blessed day. Stay based. Christ is king. And we will catch you on the next one.